I hope you've been having a great academy. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, the academy is coming from Anna Jan. Academy is great because uh, all of us, they're awesome. But it's also because well, there's great uh, sponsors that we have that we want to thank. And well, we don't only want to thank, but we want to know why they're trusting us with their support. Yeah. Well, um, the first one, Frederick, will tell us about his company. Hello. Just... I didn't do anything yet. Yeah, so uh, probably most of you oh. have heard about... But you want your slide. Yeah, that would be slide. Okay. Slide. No. Almost. He's doing magic finger acrobatics. That's awesome. So... Uh, this year I even have slides, um, not that it's super important, yeah, cute, you kind of know us, so I will skip over most of that. Um, we are doing, oh, we're doing exciting transitions somehow, okay. <laughs> so, we do a lot of stuff uh, that you are also mostly aware of. The desktop is a huge thing for us, so sometimes people come to me and say, you're not doing anything for the desktop, that's not quite true, that's where a lot of our customers are. Um, but we do have a lot of exciting things happening. There's industry automation, which is why we add all these interesting protocols. And uh, there is all this 3D stuff. Uh, you actually heard automotive a bunch of times at Academy now. If you think that's exciting, working with automotive, getting software on there, that's free software. And, for example, also getting them to do 3D stuff. That's uh, lots of cool stuff going on. So... Uh, Work is fun. We recently had some pictures taken in the office, so this is just uh, to show you. It's such a nice and cozy place. You should totally join us. These are my colleagues, some of my colleagues in Oslo. Um, yeah, briefly, 2020 is the year when we aim to uh, release Q6, and you're of course invited to shape it, either as part of the KDE community or, of course. Uh, as part of the Q company, so consider joining us. We have nice offices in Berlin, in Ulu in Finland, and of course in Oslo, Norway. Join me there, it's awesome to be there. Um, yeah, Q6, what's that? We're not gonna break things. Uh, some of you remember Q3 to 4, that was not fun. We see that. Uh, so Q6 would be more like Q4 to 5. Uh, we don't want to do breakages where we don't feel they're really necessary. We do want to clean up the graphics stack to better integrate the 2D scene graph of Qt Quick with uh, Qt 3D, for example. None of this is, of course, decided. Um, C++ 17 will be uh, the base. And uh, we actually have uh, Lars Knoll, uh, some of you know him, coming tomorrow, and he's going to be around tomorrow and Tuesday. So do talk to him, talk to me, and uh, let's make Qt better. Yeah, uh, more pictures because they're cool. These are lovely people. I recommend joining us. Do come to Oslo, it's the place to be. And with the current climate situation, I was swimming since May all the time. It's awesome there. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Hello. All right. So to reflect on the on the conference we've all just attended, um, in the KDE community we work very hard to make our software better. But as you've seen in many of the talks, we also continuously strive to make our community better and make our process better because we believe that's a good tool in and of itself, and it's something we can apply towards many different problems. Uh, at New Systems, we also work very hard to make KDE software better, but we are also trying to make a great free software company and to learn more about that and improve ourselves, because we also feel that is something that can be applied to many different problems. Especially in the past year, we've focused on winning KDE some new friends. We are very glad that some of them have joined us at this conference, and we are very happy to be here with them. And we will certainly be here in the next year. Yeah. And I'll talk with us about Ubuntu and Hello. Uh, 
you may have heard of Ubuntu before. Uh, and while, while we may have chosen another desktop as our default, there's still uh, a wide and diverse range of users who consume your software via Kubuntu. So thank you so much for providing that software for us. Um, I found it interesting listening to Nate's talk just now. Um, and apologies if any of you follow me on Twitter or Mastodon. I just brain dumped the entire talk straight onto there. So sharing it with the wider world. Um, step four is something I think we can help with. Getting your software out there to more users. That's our job. We want to present your, your software, your excellent KDE software, to many more users. Um, so I will be here for the next couple of days. Uh, and I would love to talk to you about how we can get wider uh, users of your software. Thank you. Hey, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Uh, Zeus is around for more than 25 years, and I think we have been involved with KDE from the beginning. And KDE is the, the default desktop for open Zeus, um, and we heavily rely on that. Um, I want to use the opportunity to uh, thank Nate for the wonderful talk. I pretty heavily agree with every single word you said. I think you're hitting the, the core of what KDE is and what, what users need, and I think the fact that uh, your goal was elected as, as one of the three goals for KDE shows that there's a lot of resonance out of that. And so keep, keep up the wonderful work. I think that aligns perfectly with what OpenSUSE needs as well, because there we have exactly these problems. We want to get our software to users and provide them with what, what they need. So that's, that's really uh, wonderful. Uh, one way how we do that is the package hub and telling from the popularity of the stickers outside. I uh, realize that you don't know yet what package hub is. Uh, it's the way how we deliver KDE software to enterprise users and other software. So KDE is not part of our enterprise uh, distribution anymore, but it's the way of it via package hub to customers and customers actually ask for that. So your software gets delivered via package hub to users of 315 and users of OpenSUSE, Leap 15 can easily upgrade there and get KDE software. So that's a nice thing. Good, and finally, I have to say, of course, um, we're sponsoring the conference, of course, we love KDE, um, but we also look for people. We are hiring, uh, probably everybody else does. OpenSUSE is a wonderful place to work if you want to go deep in technology, if you want to work with brilliant people, if you want to work on open source full time. Um, talk to me, figure out what is on the job site. We have interesting offers. So, thank you for having a great academy. Uh, next up, uh, Nicole will tell us about purism. that freedom is absolutely essential, and especially we believe that free software is the best key to protect our all, um, digital rights and also um, our digital freedom. And this aligns very well with the Community Goal of um, 2017 um, that you have set yourself, which is really great. Um, Pearson as a company started out in 2014 um, to create and market ethical computing devices and products that protect the user's privacy, security, and digital freedom. And the first products that we created were laptops, 13 inch and 15 inch, which feature specific features that shall provide these or shall um, protect these rights and freedoms. First of all, there are hardware kits which is embedded in the product, which buy hardware server um, things like the radios and also camera and microphone from the system so that no one can spy on you using these devices. Um, nowadays, we also ship by default with Coreboot, which is free software BIOS um, replacement for those who don't know, um, which also disables and mostly neuters the Intel management engine, which can also be used for spying on the users. And soon we will also include pads in our products, which is a way it means to protect the boot process of the laptops. And 
Last but not least, we feature um, PureOS, which is a Linux distribution that we developed together with um, open source and free software communities, which is Free Software Foundation endorsed, which also features KDE and Plasma. And these are the, the current laptop models, 14 inch and 15 inch. Our current very ambitious project is the Vindon 5, which is a mobile communication device which follows the, the same goals that, that we follow for the Linux distribution, the Pure OS, and also the laptops. Um, after the initial very successful crowdfunding campaign and the last year, we're now in the very um, yeah, final stages of the development and productization of the product, and it's really an ambitious thing. Um, and this is based on the same, very same principles as we do it for the software side and also the, the laptop side. Here are some screenshots of current mockups. This could probably know how it looks like in the final product. Um, one way to purism. Purism is a social purposes corporation, which is quite a unique thing and not that common in the US, especially. It was one of the first social purposes corporations in the US and still one of the very few. And this is especially done to ensure that those ethical goals that we share and that, that we have and we want to achieve cannot be changed within the company. So these cannot be sacrificed for creating profit. And this is the, the special being a social purposes corporation. We are an international and very diverse team of around 40 people currently and about two thirds in development, which is quite high number. And we work very closely together with all the free software communities. Our motto is upstream first, so we want to really work together with you and the other free software communities. Thank you very much for having us here and finding me the, having this brief presentation about Purism. If you want to know more, that's the URL. And if you want to try out PureOS based on Plasma, here's the URL for a download for Life Edge. Thank you very much. Specialized mostly on compute and 3D, OpenGL, those kind of things. Uh, we obviously recruited for a long time with, uh, from the KD community, a lot of the old timers, old dinosaurs, as I hear from time to time, uh, are working there. Um, and so we are actually glad to see more new faces in this community. Uh, this year it's um, really great to that. Uh, I'd like to point out that last year, so we had this cabal with uh, Mirko uh, and Frederick, uh, also long timers, uh, and we came up with that idea uh, of goals, and that's really nice to see that delivering uh, this year. Uh, plenty of good things uh, happening. Um, so thanks for all that work uh, going on in the community um, and to world domination. Thank you, Kevin, and thanks, Keda. Next up, Mirko will tell us about the Open Innovation Network. So, yeah, as every year, um, this is kind of the oddball of the sponsors. So, we here is really excited about patents and open source. All right, anybody about license compliance and open source? <laughs> Copyright trolling? <laughs> Um, all this stuff, somebody has to do it, right? And, and this is what the Open Invention Network does. It's a collaborative patent pool that through cross-licensing prevents patent litigation and ideally copyright trolling in the open source space. So um, uh, naturally, we actually don't have a, a revenue model. We are spending industry money to protect the industry from patent litigation. That's why we are, with a small amount, sponsoring this, uh, this event. Um, there's something very concrete that the KD community can do. The Open Invention Network, on a regular basis, every 18 to 20 months, updates its coverage. And KD technologies are covered by Open Invention Network, by the cross license, but in all the versions. Um, and since we're now just beginning with a new cycle of collecting updates, 
I would very much encourage maybe somebody who works in releases in the KD community to help me identify the key technologies that we should update or freshly include in our system definition. By coincidence, I am responsible for the system definition, so you know who to talk to. Um, I'm one of the KD dinosaurs. In this role, I gave a presentation last year on, on what a community needs to have a, like drive and grow. And as Kevin has mentioned, we um, this kind of triggered the um, idea of goals, which is great. It's great to see the results from that. Um, and two things stand out, right? We need to be productive, the community needs to have drive, and uh, we need to be ambitious. So everything I've heard in Nate's presentation, this is kind of what we need, right? We need goals um, that can be achievable, but only if you work really hard. So good luck with that. Keep going. You're doing well. And I hope to see you all next year. Thanks for this great conference and to the team that prepared the Hello, uh, most of you probably do not know Coping. Let me go very, very quickly about it and why we are here. Oops. No. Oh, sorry. Just. Should I start anyway? Or yeah, micro first? No. Why are they very important? Uh, Fine. Um, okay, so one of, the, one of the awesome things that you guys know, that I know, and hopefully big corporations are starting to know uh, in, in, in several industries is that uh, with knowledge uh, you can achieve almost everything. And one of the good things that we have is that we know a lot about the technologies because we basically create them. So by working upstream, a company, a small company like us, we are about oh, close to 100 people, mostly based in, in UK, in Manchester. We can go to big corporations, mostly in the embedded world and industrial world, in automotive. We can go there and really do what they cannot do or they, what they cannot do with an affordable price because our processes are better. We know the technology and we know how to solve the issues. Right. We are very focused on the lower level of the stacks. And, yep. and that, and that, that, that allows us to do things that uh, many other companies just simply can't do. Um, so, <laughs> oops. Okay. Yeah, uh, I should make, uh, Paul always tell me, forget about the slides. So we'll, we'll forget that. So, so that's why we are working upstream in many, in, many, in many communities. Now, why we are in this one, in this particular moment. So basically, I want to talk to you the, the rest of the week, well, until Tuesday, basically, about two projects that we are heavily investing on and working on. The first one is uh, Free Desktop SDK. Probably some of you know exactly what it is. The new version was released a couple of days ago. So Colting is actively investing in that. We think it's a good project to promote. To, to work on and maintain. And Free Desktop SDK is part of our world domination vision. Uh, it's using uh, the second project I want to talk to you about, open source project these days, is BuildStream. Coating has a long history on uh, creating and solving problems related with building complex systems that needs to be reliable and working for a very long time. BuildStream is being used not just by free desktop SDK guys, but also, but also as it was published uh, some weeks ago by the uh, Gnome uh, release team, the integration team. So we have a very uh, interesting use case in the open, working and using the tool. Uh, we are also focused on people that like to use, uh, to consume, produce flat packs. So that's another use case that is very interesting for us. And uh, we want to truly be an alternative for tools that are very popular out there but has been developed even more than 10 years ago. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I would like to talk to you about those topics if you are interested. And obviously, like everybody else, we are growing. I mean, the whole Linux industry is growing like crazy. So if you, are, if you want to uh, work in deep problems for big companies, things that matter a lot, then Coping is a great option. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Justin, and thanks, Coping, for being here. Last but not least, Joshua will tell us about Minecraft.
Voice is coming to every device, every platform, and every household globally. And unlike the desktop software market and the operating system market, the winners in voice have yet to be chosen. The open source community stands to be the leader in this category in the same way that it's been the leader in the server market, it's been the leader in the web market in terms of dynamic content, uh, it's been the leader in the database market. Mycroft AI is the open voice assistant. We're building an open source voice stack that can be used anywhere. Desktop, automotive, mobile, wearable, we're building a voice assistant that doesn't represent some giant company that's trying to insert itself into your life. We're building a voice assistant that represents you, the user. We're building a voice assistant that when the phone rings at 10 p.m., it'll let the call through because it's your brother calling to let you know the baby's here, not because it's a telemarketer that's paid the voice assistant company to get through your filters. We're hoping to have the KDE community engage with us to build this future, a future where voice belongs to the open community. And that means building agents that run not only on the desktop computer, but on mobile devices, wearable devices, and across all of the points where we touch technology in our lives. So if you're interested in making sure that there's an open future for voice, that Amazon, Google, Baidu, Tencent, and Alibaba don't dominate this market the way they've dominated every other market in technology over the last 10 years. Please come and volunteer with our community. Help Atya to build a voice assistant stack for the KDE desktop. And in the future, as we extend the technology to more devices, more automobiles, more wearables, and more mobile devices, be a part of our community and help us to build an open future. Thank you. Source, Linux, and 964 for sponsoring Academy. They couldn't give us a talk now.